This is Planet Vibrant Soap. My brother got me that mug, and I don't know what he was trying to tell me. I don't think I'm a grumpy kind of person. Anyway, today's focus is on color. Um, people have been asking me for other videos on color. I made one called Doorways of Color, and I'll put a link to that on this video. Um, but um, today I'm going to focus on browns, and it's kind of silly because that's exactly what we usually don't want in our soaps. But I think sometimes you can learn more by looking into what you don't want than uh, into what you want. And you'll see what I mean, I think, in this video today. So I'm going to give you some basics in some brighter colors, and then kind of lead into brown, and then go into um, some glycerin soap making that I'm going to be doing today. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, I started off with um, the primary colors. Just this is a really quick um, video just to get us uh, into the browns. And so here I have already painted on in watercolor um, the primary colors. And then you can see how the red and the blue go to make together to make the purple and the yellow and the red to make the orange and I don't know why that's way over there, but the yellow and the blue to make the green. So rather than to recreate the color wheel, there's lots of these things at art stores that are very helpful. And um, there's the only problem is that there's everything on that and it can get a little confusing. So I'm going to just talk about one part of color today and that's the browns. And I'm going to be making my ginger people in a moment and talk more about browns. But um, let's take a look at what can give you browns. There's one thing that we have that's called the um, complement color. They're the colors right across from the color wheel from each other. So here's here we have this kind of violet and yellow. And what happens if we do that mixed together is... We get a muddy down color, gray or brown. There's all different kinds of brown. So uh, again, talking about this to you all is to get the brown that you want or the green that you want and so on. So the other thing that we have is the orange. I like orange and browns. It's kind of a more um, bright brown. And it's complementary color of uh, blue. And you can see what happens is you don't get a blue and you don't get an orange. You get sort of a muddied in between. But the more orange I add to that mix, the warmer it becomes. So there's a nice brown right there. Another kind of brown that you can get is by mixing reds and greens. So here's my red. And here's a little bit of green. So I almost got a, like a blackish color. And I want to warm that, that up again. I'm going to add the warm of the two colors, which is the red. And I get a sort of reddish brown in that respect. So even in the tea that I'm drinking today, um, you probably can't see it very well, but it's more of a kind of creamy brown. And I'm not going to be talking about the addition of white today because generally um, we can work with the titanium dioxide at our color and we always have that um, in our soaps. But I want to show you something else. So let's see. Let's take a look at purple. So here's this purple, and you can see it's a nice bright purple. And it's showing up really nicely because it's in white. So why do we have so much trouble with purple in our soap? And that's because soap is generally sort of yellow, which is sort of the um, enemy of purple. I'm gonna take that same purple and this is really exaggerating because this is such a deep purple. But you can see that that bright purple is no longer bright because it's with its opposite. And opposite colors or complementary colors tend to get browns. And you don't trust me on this one. I'm just going to show you 
what happens if I paint that same color on the yellow and the white. So that's a quick little talk about browns. Um, if you're using watercolor, browns are easy to get because there's usually a brown on the palette in these little sets. So these are really inexpensive um, colors, paints to, um, to buy and learn about color. And I kind of suggest doing that if you are really trying to perfect your color mixing for soaps or any other project. Lots of color videos out there too to watch. Um, this one is just more specific to um, coloration in soap. So let me get on with the um, soap making today. And today I'm going to continue to make my holiday soap. Today it's going to be melt and pour or glycerin soap and I usually do that at the last um, bit of my holiday soap making because it takes less time for it to cure. Basically as soon as it solidifies it's ready to go so I do all my cold process soap that needs a lot of time to cure first. So my cold process soap is curing right now. I'm going to be making ginger bread people today. And so the major lesson in this particular video is one on color. Because these ginger people are basically brown, but I don't want you to accept any kind of brown that comes out of a pre-mixed tube or anything like that. There's lots of different kinds of brown. So if you look at a brown carefully, sometimes you can kind of know what other color to add to it to make it the rich kind of brown that you really want for your project. Browns can be a combination of opposite colors like green and red. And when companies provide this for you, sometimes it might be a little bit heavy on the green or a little heavy on the red. So I want you to look at the brown that you have and know exactly what to add to it to make it the kind of brown that you really want. So that's what the video is today. So let's get started. Okay, so the first step I did was I melted some melt and pour, being careful not to um, overheat it. And generally, if you melt it all at um, and all the chunks of solid melt and pour melt for you, it's probably a little overheated. So I, I wait until there's just a little bit left and then I stir it until the rest of it melts. So there's the melt and pour. And I added some titanium di dioxide to that. Okay, so I'm going to spray the inside of those with a little bit of alcohol. I'm going to take my eyedropper and kind of carefully get them in these little details. This is the lowest part of the mold. And what the uh, alcohol did was it allows, uh, because it's moist already, it allows this to just flow and fill the details. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, color the soap. And you'll see that I have some brown oxide. And this is not going to be nearly like the color that I want. That's, that's, um, that's more like chocolate. It's not like uh, gingerbread. So I looked at gingerbread, or if you can remember what gingerbread looks like. I have a pretty good color memory. It's a little bit more... It's got some white to it. And uh, if this translates to video, you'll see that it's like getting closer. When you do that, I can see that it's a little bit too much on the redder side of brown. You don't really want that. So I'm going to take some green. And you got to be real slow with this. And like I would do like a drop at a time. I'm going to do some green, which is the opposite of red. And you can see the red team down a bit. I think I want one more drop of green might do it. I think that is the hue that I want. But I want a tint of that. And the tint is a version with white. Now we're getting closer to that gingerbread color. Yeah, and now what it needs is a little bit more brown to darken it up. So you're really adjusting. And the fragrance oil 
is kind of orangey, which will add a color to it as well. So I'm going to add that. That's 0.5 ounces, fluid ounces, to 32 ounces of melt and pour. And I checked for a fragrance calculator for that. And I can, I can live with this. If I add any more white, it'll kind of, kind of flush it out. So the other thing I'm doing is I'm taking the temperature as I stir. It's 135. So I can combine the scent, the fragrance, and the colors really well as I cool off the soap at the same time. I don't want it too hot because the details that I poured in the mold, um, I don't want it to melt that. Checking for color. I think I want a little bit more white after all. Really, you have the advantage of, uh, if you're a baker, to have that uh, sense of what color you really want. I'm going to add a little bit of orange to it because I really think it could use that too. It could use the, um, the yellow that's in the orange basically to brighten it up. And that really smells great too. I'm using um, gingerbread cookie fragrance from Peak. I did one yes last year. It smelled great too, but it was a little heavy on the ginger. If you like ginger, no problem. Okay, now I'm gonna um, spray my molds so that the gingerbread portion of these cookies adheres to the details. And you didn't see me spray that, but I did. And just get that in there. All the way to the top because I feel it unmolds better. It's also easier to see the color now. And you certainly don't want those bubbles on there, so I'm going to spray that with the alcohol. It's ready to set. And I'm going to do the same thing with my other mold. And be back. Okay, so these are thoroughly cooled off and hardened. I do prefer silicone molds. One, maybe one day I'll make a silicone mold for these things. This hard plastic is takes some effort sometimes to sort of pull apart, loosen up the sides first, and then eventually they pop up. So there's um, one of the ginger persons and. Um, when you make gingerbread, the actual gingerbread cookies, you flour the surface and then you put the dough and you roll it. So this little bit of white doesn't really um, bother me that much. So um, so they're very cute and I can see I missed, um, I missed a little white spot there, but it's very minimal mistakes. Okay, so I'll do the rest and unfortunately I only have two of these molds so it takes me a while to do and I do a little bit and then I do something else so I'm not wasting time and then um, I move on and finish this up. So um, that's it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>